what we wanted to see. This car isn't staying blue. Behold, the Irish Green 996 is upon us. There's a bit of a surprise coming up on the back of the car. And here is the end product. All right, I'm going to ditch the fancy intro this episode and crack straight on with the story because I know you are here to see an Irish Green 996. So, the team started by giving a coat of satin black to the underbonnet, engine bay and front bumper grille before digging out the Irish Green one more time for those last little bits of bodywork a touch more visible on the car, such as door handles, the fuel flap and both exterior wing mirrors. Then, the 996 could properly start being put back together. Big ticket items such as front and rear bumpers were first to be reunited with the main body, followed by the doors. Even with just those panels in place, we were already starting to get a feel for how awesome the finished project was going to look. It was seriously exciting to watch. Rear quarter windows were riveted back in, then it was time for the front and rear screens to be rehomed, which of course needed a specialist to bond them back in place. Once they were taken care of, it was time for designer Pinky Lie's iconic one-piece headlights to be slotted home, followed by the rears, followed by the carbon duct out as the crowning piece of four weeks hard work. Job done. This is it then. All roads lead to this very moment right now. Let's recap then. So the car came in with that white wrap. We took the wrap off, which actually took off the top layer of the Zenith blue paint that was hiding underneath it. Bad times, it meant a respray all round. That gave rise to a crazy idea, which essentially was me realizing a dream and having a Porsche 911, my Porsche 911, painted Irish green, my favorite Porsche color. From there, we've had to haul every last shred of that wrap off. Once the wrap was off, the car was had to be prepped fully for paint. So that's complete sanding down, smoothing over, dent removal. Once the prep was done, it went into the paint booth. It went black, first of all, which was the base coat, which is what you need for this Irish green. After the base coat went on and dried in the oven, then went Irish green, which I think was four coats from memory, plus lacquer. Then, as we've seen in the montage that I've just played, the car's been put back together and had a good amount of polishing done. It is literally a piano effect by the looks of it. So, in the space of four weeks, we have gone from white to zenith blue, to the grey of the etch primer, to the black of the base coat, to beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Irish green. The result of that is an unbelievable amount of hard work, diligence, expertise and talent from a massive team of people here at Paul Accent Repair. I don't need to come on camera and praise these guys, I've done it enough to their faces, but I really feel like they deserve as much public recognition and, and public positivity as possible because ultimately I've given them my pride and joy for the best part of a month and just entrusted their talents and expertise on it. They have more than delivered. A lot of people in the comments have asked what is the cost of undertaking a project like this. Truthfully, it all comes down to the prep that's needed and therefore it varies quite substantially. The more prep needed, obviously the more labour involved and therefore the greater cost. What I'm going to do shortly is get Leon in and have a chat about the process from paint until this point because there is so much that's gone into it and there's lots that we can learn in the next couple of minutes. So we'll get him. I'll ask some questions that hopefully has been on the minds of you guys as well watching this from start to finish. But in the meantime, I'm going to get out of the way and show you guys an Irish green Porsche 996. Let's do it. Yep, the duck's gone Irish as well, which judging by the comments in the previous video, I think a lot of people might be quite glad over. Those with a keen eye may have realized in that video about the duck towel, that this was actually lacquered and due to go on as is. I've decided from the get go that because that carbon fiber weave was genuinely so perfect all the way over, I wanted to show it. Slight little snag though, when we fitted the duck towel at the first time, took a step back to admire it, there wasn't a lot of admiring done. It looked awful, but we live and learn. It did mean quite a monumental backtrack had to happen in order to get that lacquer off, paint it up again, and then put some more lacquer on. But I'm sure you'll agree the result is absolutely worth it. OK, 
Okay, we all remember this man, Leon. Cheers for your time. Mate, honestly, I am so chuffed with this. I know we've been chatting yeah. about it off yeah. camera. I am beyond chuffed with it. So thank you, first of all. It's come up really well, all things considered. It's come up really well. What is the difference then between uh, having a car sprayed at the Porsche factory versus being sprayed at a Porsche recommended shop? So the processes that we use are really set by the factory anyway. So they tell us that we can't put any more than 500 microns of paint on. They tell us what etch primers we need to use. So the factory tell us what to do, essentially. The difference is we're not robots. The process post paint. Yep. What is that process? Because I didn't realise how much polishing goes into it. We're spraying in an enclosed oven. However, there will be dust particles. So what we need to do is remove the dust particles, essentially. So although you saw a few of them before we, we prepped final prep, they look like great big mountain tops. They're not, they're just absolutely magnified due to the amount of lacquer that goes over the top. So you end up with a, what we call nibbing. So the nibbing that took place on this was quite substantial because we went a little bit further than what you would really expect. It's not quite what we'd call piano finish, but it, it's, it's very, very close to it. The guys here have all got great passion and, and great belief in what they can do. So hopefully you've seen that over the past three or four weeks. Um, they are devoted to the job and making it absolutely perfect. Leon, honestly, mate, thank you so much for everything that, that, that you've all done. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon when I've had a prang. <laughs> so not. <laughs> Cheers, mate. It's a bit of an automotive chameleon, this thing now, because it changes colour quite substantially. When in the sunlight, how it is now, it's got a real rich pop to it. Out of direct sunlight, it goes so dark, it might as well be Brewster Green or something like that. It changes quite a lot, which I find quite fascinating, actually. I have to say, it's been fairly fascinating getting this back and driving it again, because to all intents and purposes, it feels like a different car. When I look out the window now, I don't see a shabby white wrap with bits of blue poking through. I see green. It really does feel like a completely new car, which is weird, because inside it still feels, it still feels like home, really. With regards to the car's appearance, this paint job isn't quite the end of the line. There will be a few further bits and pieces I want to do just to, what well, is in my mind, perfect the look. Uh, the wheels, for example, they need refurbing, so we'll look at those in due course. I quite fancy those going satin gold. I'd like to hear what you think. I'm also thinking about putting a couple of decals down the side. Nothing crazy, just maybe the traditional Porsche scripts down the side. So as I say, this really is the start of what is going to be a fun-filled 996 project. I really want to show just what's possible with the 996. So let's see where it goes, shall we?